<laughs> well, that's just what a guy wants to hear after he makes love laughing. <laughs> no, no, I'm not laughing at you. I'm not. This was... Oh, being with you is so great. Oh, no, it's so much better than great. It's incredible. Uh, you're right. It's just amazing. start to give me a complex. What are you, oh, what are you laughing at? Oh, no. No, no. This just... Uh, this just reminds me oh. of being in school. You made love like this in high school? Oh, high school? Mm. Oh, please. Are you kidding? I was such a shy goody, goody in high school. You know, it wasn't until I went away to college in Europe that I really came out of my shell. You are certainly going to be shell, right? Mm. Just sleeping late and lounging around like this was what my life was like at the university. It was fun. It was, it was basically me just trying to get out of everything I was supposed to do so that I could do something really bad. We are so different. <laughs> so, are you sure I'm not too much for you? I'll tell you what. You keep talking like this, and I'm never getting out of bed. The prosecution calls Alan Spaulding to the stand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Just calm down. Everything's gonna work out. The hell it is. They've already been crucifying Reva in there. Now Alan Spaulding's on the stand. You know what? That pig's gonna lie. Amanda, where are you going? Uh, I have to go back to the office. I have some work to do. Oh, well, I'm glad I caught you. I, uh, I want to congratulate you on your testimony. <laughs> You think I enjoyed being grilled on the stand, you're wrong. I was subpoenaed. And still, some of that testimony sounded like an apology. To whom? Me. For using that party of yours to try and hurt Blake. Well, I never realized how important your children are to you. And now I know. Mr. Spaulding, before the party, why did you call Reba Shane? I believe I called Miss Shane to inquire why she was behaving so peculiarly. And what did she tell you? As I said, I, I don't exactly recall what she said. Did you invite Miss Shane to the party? I may have mentioned getting together and talking and that we were having a cocktail party that night. But I don't specifically remember saying that we would meet there. You're a damn liar. You can't do this. I'm not going to let you. You're going to listen to me this time. Mr. Spaulding, let's turn to the night that Reva Shane pushed Annie Lewis down the stairs, resulting in the death of her unborn child. Objection. The district attorney's statement is conclusory. Mr. Marler is stating as fact issues we are vigorously disputing in this trial. Sustained. On the evening of May 19th, did you see Reva Shane and Annie Lewis together at the party? Yes, I did. And what were they doing? They were having a heated argument. About what? I didn't exactly hear the conversation. Then how do you know it was an argument? Their voices were raised. They were not making normal cocktail talk. I see. What happened after Annie Lewis headed upstairs? Miss Shane raced up after her. Now, directly after that, did you see Reva Shane push Annie Lewis down the staircase? Yes, I did. Thank you very much, Mrs. Boyd. <laughs> well, there's one more thing. Uh, did you see Reva Shane before she appeared to be arguing with Annie Lewis? Yes. Where? There at the party. Was she alone? No, she wasn't. Who was she with? 
Josh Lewis. So, Reva Shane was talking with Mrs. Lewis's husband? She was doing more than that. She was kissing him. Objection, Your Honor. Your witness. When the heat is on Emily. I have a little score to settle with you. She makes a deal with the devil. Money and power are the only things that matter. Now you think you're so tough, girl. You treat me with respect, I demand it. But you could get burned. No one's gonna come here and rescue you. So go ahead, lose your cool as the world turns. Ooh. This is all I could find in the cupboard. Give it to me, I'm starving. Well, actually, it's a little stale. What? Oh, it's very stale. Well, it's been in there since you left. Mr. Hubbard, your cupboards are bare. So are we. <laughs> Seriously, how can you live like this? Well, you know, bachelor life really doesn't uh, live up to the expectations of that myth. <laughs> well, you know, I believe it. Matt's the same way. Every time I go over there, he's got old pizza in the refrigerator with green stuff growing out of it. It's not easy being single. Mm -hmm. I know it's sad to go over there now because my mother always had the refrigerator stocked with tons of food. And there was always great smells coming from the stove and the freezer, forget it. It was filled with goodies for everyone, especially Peter. And even me, if I stopped by. No matter where everyone was in the house, everyone ended up in the kitchen. It was more about love than food, though, you know? And that's a woman's touch. I guess every house needs one, huh? Absolutely. Do you know how much I miss you? You do? I do. Move in with me. <laughs> you already tried that. Yeah, but we can make it work this time. Are you serious? I could not be more serious. I want us to live together. But the last time we tried it, it didn't work. Yeah, but this time we could make it work. Hey, what are you doing here? You already testified. Well, now your turn's coming up, so... Yeah, well, you're supposed to be on call. Oh, I, I just got somebody to, to cover for me. Uh... I... I know from experience how tough it can be up on that stand, so... Yeah, Ross asks tough questions. And Griffin is no slouch, either. I really, really wish I didn't have to do this. That's why I came back. I, I just wanted to be here for you. Oh. Well, I'm glad you did. I'll, I'll just uh, stick around until they call you, okay? I mean, if you want, I could, I could even walk in with you. Yes, yes, thank you. I want to help Riva. I really do, but I have never been so nervous about anything in my life. Yeah. You'll be fine. Okay. Okay. It's hard, but you've got to go back in there and sit down next to your wife. You know what we're trying to accomplish here? Yeah, I know what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to get Reva acquitted. Okay. So put on your best poker face and go back in there. No matter what Alice Bowling says, don't lose your cool. Easier said than done. Come on. You're not going to let that jerk get to you. Spalding's lie every time they open their mouth. Yeah, you know, I know that, and you know that, but but the testimony that Ross is getting out of him right now is making Reva look guilty as hell. Yeah, well, Ross is the prosecutor, and he's a good one. He's doing his job. Let Reva have her day as soon as Griffin gets Alan on the stand. Billy, I hate this. I hate the fact that there's nothing I can do but go in there and sit next to Annie and pretend like I'm on her look, side. I know you hate it. You're just going to have to hang in there. I'm going to go over and see you. Uh, Rusty, see if you found anything out about Fran, okay? I'll be back. Okay. Right. Mr. Spaulding, you claim to have seen Josh Lewis kissing Reva Shane. 
Well, I'm not for sure who was kissing whom, counsel. Well, could you please describe that kiss? Well, it was just a kiss. I mean, was it passionate, friendly? Well, I'm not used to rating kisses, but I certainly was surprised to see Miss Shane at the party. Well, that wasn't my question, but why was that? You said you mentioned the party to Reva when you spoke with her on the phone. Yes, as I said, I did mention it to her, but I was surprised to see her kissing Josh Lewis. Surprised, Mr. Spaulding, or jealous? Objection. Leading the witness here. Sustained. Withdrawn. Mr. Spaulding, you, uh, you brought Reva Shane back to Springfield. Is that true? Yes, that is true. And isn't it true that the two of you had a very close relationship for quite some time, and then she married another man? Yes. Is it true that you still hold resentment for Ms. Shane? Objection. Overruled. Witness will answer. The truth is, I don't think about Ms. Shane either way. Hmm. But you were aware that she was searching for a long-lost sister. Annie did mention her making wild accusations. Uh, Mr. Spaulding, do you know about a family from uh, Arizona by the name of uh, LaFontaine? No, I don't recall that name. Well, that's odd, since Mr. LaFontaine is the chief beneficiary of your company's largest acquisition to date. Spaulding is a conglomerate. I don't know every person that I do business with. Before I ask you this next question, Mr. Spaulding, remember that you are under oath. Isn't it true that you bribed Mr. LaFontaine into giving Reva Shane information about her sister? Objection. This speculation has nothing to do with this case, Your Honor. Approach, Your Honor. Please indulge me for a moment, Your Honor. I'm about to show that this is a, there's a reason for my, my question. The uh, entire case against Reba Shane is predicated on fabrication and false allegations made against her by Annie Lewis. Your Honor, Mr. Williams will have a chance to rebut the prosecution in due course if he's able. Mr. Marler is correct, Mr. Williams. No more grandstanding for the jury. I would thank you to confine your remarks at the present time to your cross-examination. And when you do present your argument, you better have corroborating witnesses for that statement. You could straighten this whole thing out. I apologize to the court. Are you finished? Not quite. <clears throat> Mr. Spaulding, let's talk about your relationship with Annie Lewis. I was paralyzed from my waist down. I couldn't walk, and uh, Mrs. Lewis was my nurse. Well, she got you back on your feet. Yes, she worked very hard to rehabilitate me. You must feel indebted to her. Indebted? No, I wouldn't say that. You said she was instrumental in your recovery. You must feel grateful to her. You owe her something. She helped you regain the use of your legs. I retained Mrs. Lewis' services to make sure that I got back on my feet walking again, and for that, she was paid very well, counsel. So you're saying your relations with Mrs. Lewis were purely financial? Isn't it true that by definition, your relations were physical? I'm not for sure I know what you mean. Well, she was your physical therapist, after all. It required that she touch you. When you tried to get out of your wheelchair, you couldn't do it alone, could you? Well, of course not. No. You had to lean on someone. You had to rely on Mrs. Lewis's strength. Isn't that so, Mr. Spaulding? I don't understand your question. I mean, physically. Did you hold Mrs. Lewis around her waist? Did she hold you in her arms? Objection, inflammatory. Mr. Williams, where are you going with all this? I'm trying to establish a foundation for the relationship between Mrs. Lewis and Mr. Spaulding, Your Honor. All right, I'll allow it. Thank you. You referred to the work you and Mrs. Lewis did. The fact is, the two of you worked very closely together. The two of you, alone, in a room. The work was very intense, was it not, Mr. Spaulding? Uh, Mr. Williams, get to the point. Mr. Spaulding, all I'm saying is that it's not unusual for a patient to become emotionally involved with this physical therapist. Objection, Your Honor. The witness is not an expert on this subject. Uh, Mr. Williams, where are you going with all this? I'll, I'll rephrase, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Spaulding, would you say that uh, you and Mrs. Lewis are friends? Yes, I would say that Annie Lewis is my friend. 
Well, it's a matter of public record that Mrs. Lewis was suspended from her position at Cedars Hospital because of her addiction to drugs. Is it true that you went out of your way to hire her when no one else would? I hired her because I knew she was an excellent nurse. And her dismissal in no way colored your opinion? Everyone deserves a second chance, Counsel. Well, what a generous gesture. The Spaldings are known for their philanthropic work. Oh, so you took Annie Lewis on as your own <laughs> private charity? Now, objection, Your Honor. It has already been established that the victim and Mr. Spaulding are friends. Sustained. Uh, Mr. Spaulding, uh, would I be correct to assume that as friends, you and Mrs. Lewis would confide in each other? To some extent, yes. To the extent that Mrs. Lewis would confide in you about her marriage? Objection. Sustained. I am beginning to lose my patience here, Mr. Williams. If you have a point to make with all this, now would be a very good time. Your Honor, I'm trying to establish that the relationship between Mrs. Lewis and Mr. Spaulding had deepened to the point where Mr. Spaulding would lie for her. Isn't that true, Mr. Spaulding? Continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. During the course of your physical therapy, you and Mrs. Lewis spent many hours together, did you not? <laughs> it was just a part-time job, counsel. <laughs> well, in the process of doing the various exercises, the two of you would talk, right? Yes, we would converse. Yeah. About what, specifically? Well, current events, the weather, many things. You did say that you and Mrs. Lewis were friends, and friends do talk about lots of things, true. But the two of you did talk about your private lives. Look, I, I don't recall every conversation we had verbatim. Was she close enough to you to tell you how she even knew Reva Shane had a long-lost sister? Something Miss Shane hardly ever spoke to anyone about. No. Huh. Well, Mrs. Lewis found out somehow. And in order for her to pose as that long-lost sister, she had to have help laying a false trail. A trail that will lead Reva Objection, Shane... Objection, right? Your Honor. Mr. Williams is once again making accusations without any evidence whatsoever. Sustained. Mr. Williams. I am not in the habit of repeating myself, sir. You've been warned. I suggest you take heed. I'm not going to hesitate to find you in contempt of this court if it's necessary. I apologize, Your Honor. I withdraw my remarks. Mr. Spaulding, let's return to the previous question. Mm -hmm. Would you lie for Mrs. Lewis if you thought it would help her? I think Annie Lewis is one of the most remarkable women I've ever known. I admire her courage, her skill, her spirit. She is also generous and kind. She's also suffered greatly this year. And I think in the face of all of this, she has grown stronger because of this suffering. And I find that remarkable. And yes, I would do everything I could to help Annie Lewis. I'm glad to know that you find Mrs. Lewis a remarkable lady, Mr. Spaulding, but that was not my question. I asked if you'd lie for her. I've never found it necessary, counsel. Mr. Spaulding, how are you feeling right now? Uh, physically, I mean. Fine, thank you. Completely recovered? Just about. So even though you say you're well again, you've just rehired Annie Lewis to be your nurse. Isn't that odd? Objection. Uh, no further questions. Do you wish to redirect, Mr. Barter? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I do. Were Annie and Alan having an affair? Mm, I wouldn't put it past her if she needs him to, to lie for her. With all this talk, this long-winded talk about who's friendly with whom and what all the relationships are, the fact remains that this trial is still about one thing, and therefore I have only one question. On the night of May 1, did you see Reva Shane push Annie Lewis down the stairs? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. No further questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Mr. Spaulding. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the prosecution calls Abigail Bloom. Prison. Alan, it was worth every minute I had to spend for shooting Roger Thorpe. You kind of remind me of him. Mr. Spaulding, is it true there Get was out one of other patient nurse relations with Annie Lewis? Lewis? Hello, 
Fran? It's Ellen Spaulding. Listen, I want to set up a meeting now. Ms. Bloom, how would you characterize your relationship with the defendant? Rive is my best friend, and we first met in Gersh. Thank you very much, Ms. Bloom. Now, let's talk about Reva Shane's mysterious, long-lost sister that we've heard so much about. Mm, Ross is good. He's bringing up one of our main arguments and preempting it. Did you know that Reva was searching for her sister and her claim about Annie Lewis indeed being that person? Yes, and, and that's why she ended her relationship with Josh, because she didn't want to hurt her sister or the person uh, that she thought Ms. was... Ms. Bloom, Ms. Bloom, Your Honor, would you please instruct the witness to limit her answers to the questions being posed? Please, do so, Ms. Bloom. The prosecution has called this witness, but we've agreed to treat her as a hostile witness. I'm not hostile. I'm, I'm answering the questions truthfully. Thank you. I appreciate that. Did Annie Lewis ever tell you that she knew that Reva was looking for her sister? No. Did Annie Lewis ever tell you that she was Reva's sister? Well, not, not directly to me, but I know that she told Reva that she wasn't supposed to tell Josh about it. How did you know that? Reva told me. Oh, so all this information you have about Annie Lewis supposedly posing as Reva's sister, it all comes from one source, what Reva Shane told you? Well, I don't, I don't see Mrs. Lewis very often. Miss Bloom? Miss Bloom? Yes. Answer only the question that is asked, please. Yes. Thank you. Is it true that Reva Shane the day before this trial started, went to the doctor's office to check up on Annie Lewis? I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, excuse me, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Bloom is hearing impaired. I'm sorry. No, it's my fault. <clears throat> no, Thank you. Um, it's all right. Okay. I'm sorry. Miss mm. Bloom? Yes. I asked you, did you know that Reva Shane went to see Annie Lewis's obstetrician? Yes, and she went there because <clears throat> she thought that Annie might not be telling the truth about the paternity of her child and maybe even might be lying about how far along she was in the pregnancy. So she went to the doctor to get proof from the medical records, and that is the only reason she went there. Why do you think that Ms. Shane thought it necessary to wear a black wig going to the uh, doctor? Objection. The uh, witness is not an expert on the defendant's feelings. Sustained. I'll rephrase. Did you know that Reva Shane wore a disguise when she went to the doctor's office? Well, I... Miss Bloom? Well, how else was she supposed to get information? Her face is plastered all over the newspapers. Do you think that Miss Shane is obsessed with Annie Lewis? Objection, a clinical term. Miss Bloom is not a psychologist. Your Honor, Miss Bloom has already stated that she is Reva Shane's best friend, and so who better to gain some insight into Reva Shane's mental and emotional state, which is germane to our case? I'll allow it. Reva only wanted to find out the truth, and Annie led her on a wild goose chase for her sister. Ms. Bloom, we've already established that as hearsay. Are you saying that you know it as fact? No. But Reva said that... Oh, see, there's that phrase again. Reva said. Now, Reva Shane could absolutely have told you anything, and you would believe her. Is that right? Objection. Yes. Overruled. Yes, I would believe her. I mean, I, I wouldn't believe her if I thought she was lying. Do you always know when people are lying to you, Miss Bloom? No, not always. You were at the party at the Spaulding House that evening, were you not? Yes. So did you see Reva Shane follow Annie Lewis up the stairs? Miss Bloom, did you see Reva Shane follow Annie Lewis up the stairs? Objection! The prosecution is badgering the witness. Your Honor, that is certainly not my intention. I simply would like to know what Ms. Bloom saw. That's all. I'll allow it. Please answer Mr. Martyr's question. Yes, I saw Reva follow Annie up the stairs. Thank you. Then what did you see? I saw Annie fall. But that does not mean she was pushed. It doesn't? Are you saying that Annie Lewis, five and a half months pregnant, looking forward to her first baby, 
purposely threw herself down the stairs? No, but she... There's an explanation for it because... Ms. Bloom, Reba for the last time, would you please answer only the question? Now, what did you see happen at the top of the stairs between your good friend, Reva Shane, and Annie Lewis? Well, I saw... Miss Bloom, could you please speak up? What did you see? I saw... what appeared to be... Reva pushing her, but... Thank you. <clears throat> Then did you see Dr. Rick Bauer attending to Annie Lewis after the fall? Yes. Did he ask for your assistance? Yes, he did. Now, isn't it true that Dr. Bauer asked you to keep Reva Shane away from Annie Lewis? Well, he said that. He... Dr. Bauer said what? With Annie Lewis lying at the bottom of the stairs, injured and bleeding, Reva Shane tried to get at her, didn't she? No. Annie... Reva wanted Annie to stop saying that she had pushed her down the stairs. And Dr. Bauer wanted you to keep Reva away from Annie because she was making a bad situation much worse? But Reva was trying to... No, Miss Bloom, would you please answer the question? Isn't it true, after Annie Lewis was taken away in the ambulance, you went to the hospital with Reva Shane? She was upset. Upset? Everyone was very upset. Yes, yes. What about Annie Lewis? She was the victim. Was Reva upset about her? It's an objection. The witness can't testify what was going through Miss Shane's head. Withdrawn. Isn't it true that you went to the hospital with Reva Shane because you were afraid of what she might say or do, and you didn't want her to harass Annie Lewis any more than she already had? Objection. Sustained. The next thing out of your mouth, Mr. Marler, better be a question and not an answer. Ms. Bloom, is it true that after Annie Lewis was taken to the hospital, Dr. Rick Bauer declared the Lewis baby to be dead? Well, I don't remember exactly. Weren't you at the hospital the night that the Lewis baby was declared dead? Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Williams? No questions at this time, Your Honor. Ten minute recess. Miss Bloom, you're excused. Here's a place right on the lake. I I know where this is. Where is it? It's not far out of town. Let me see, let me see, let me see. This A-frame? Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. It sounds great, doesn't it? Let's check it out. Okay. Okay? I'm okay. gonna jump in the shower. Oh, wait, 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 I can't, I can't. Why? I have to pick up Peter. Oh. Well, that's all right. Well, do you mind if I go by myself? No, I And okay. then maybe I can check out some other places, too. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll pick him up. You go check these places out. I'll meet you at company in two hours. Okay.
I wish my mother could see how happy I was right now. Ms. Bloom, no comments. Oh, but Dr. Bauer, we can't we discuss it, please. Not now. I feel so ashamed of myself. Ashamed? Why? Because I wanted to help her, not hurt her. No, I just... Listen, listen to me. What? You did the only thing that you could. You got up on that stand and you told the truth. I really wish that I could have lied. I wish I could have gotten up there and don't, lied. Don't, don't, don't say that. We both know what lies do, don't we? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Glad you're still here. I can't wait to tell the boys what a great job you're doing. I'm so proud of you. Oh, yeah? Well, today is one of those days when I wish I did something else for a living. I don't enjoy putting people through the ringer like this. Me and Abby? Yeah. It's hard to do your job when people's lives are affected by the outcome. The only bright spot was looking out and seeing you here. So soon? In between meetings, by the way, receptionist asked me to tell you that a woman in Switzerland has been leaving several messages for you. They didn't leave a name, just numbers. Playing hard to get again. Amanda, this is a story you wouldn't believe. There must be some way we can undermine Annie's credibility. Trust me, Riva. It's not over yet. There's nothing going on between Alan and, and me. I hope you believe that no matter what Griffin says up there, there's just nothing to it. It's strictly professional. I wouldn't worry about Alan. Usually a good jury can tell when a witness is lying. Fred, where are you? Hello, Fred. How come Annie isn't here with you? From here on in, you deal with me. But Annie Forget said... Forget about Annie. From now on, you listen to me and only me. Do you understand that? finish this house for us, Vanessa. We're gonna be so happy here. Here we 
with you in our house. We'll grow old together. through hell. I deserve to be reimbursed for what I have gone through. Annie wants you gone. Show me the money, then. That's all you have to do. You give me what I have earned for doing what Annie asked, and you will never hear from me again. That's a promise. I've got it right here, Fran. There's more waiting if you're interested in it. I don't understand. Are you asking me to do something more? My, my, you're a very smart woman. So that's why you wanted to see me alone. Listen to me and I'll tell you exactly what I want you to do. Thank you for coming here to be with me. Abigail Bloom, there's no place on earth I would rather be. And I just want you... I, I just wanted you to know that I still... I should tell you that I... I miss you, too. But... No, no, no. Don't spoil this. You don't know how long I've waited to hear you say those words. Jason, that's not a mop. That's your brother's hair. <laughs> well, at least he has some hair. It's better than the mohawk. Yeah. My boy's stubborn, huh? Takes after his dad. Blake, I'm grateful. For what? Telling your antics about the twins? It's my favorite subject. You, know, you always seem to know what I need. How do you do that? I know you very well, Ross. Well, thanks for taking my mind off this trial for a few minutes. And what do I have to do? I'm not reconvened. Is it that cut and dried? Oh, yes. Unless Griffin or somebody else comes up with some new evidence, the case against Riva, it's over with. The only question is, how long is she going to spend in prison? Excuse me, Mr. Marler. Yes. Court is ready to resume. Okay. Thank you very much. So I will see you after court tonight. Tonight. Sweetheart, you're up next. I know this is very hard for you. I wish you wouldn't have come to this. What does that mean? But Reva, you know, after everything that she's done to us and for the sake of our child's life, she does have to pay, though, doesn't she? Josh, you ready? Okay. Yeah. Hey, you know how I said before I didn't want to take the witness stand? Yeah. I can't wait. I'm going to get in there, I'm going to get on that stand, I'm going to tell them the truth. Whoa, Josh, Josh. No, no, no. You can't, you no, can't no, do that. No. I'm no. tired of this. I can't keep sitting in there and pretending to be on Annie's side. I've had enough. I'm going to tell the whole world exactly the way it was. This has been Guiding Light. on the CBS Evening News to get the whole story. We rely on experience. The CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Experience you can trust.